So let's go into this. And so now I have this module here. And I didn't tell you this last time we were in here, but we can notice that we're inside a module because the interface tab is gone. We have these two buttons at the top. The first one says to go up one level, and the second one takes us to the top level, home. And the reason there are two separate buttons is you can have as many levels deep as you want. We're only showing one level in this particular model. So the buttons do the same thing. The other thing you can tell is at the top here, we have the name of the module that we're in. And if we're down several levels, it has a path to where we are. We'll show in the title bar so we know where we are. So here we have our housing supply module. And in this module, we have um, these three variables here that I've marked as wanting inputs from elsewhere, but they're not connected yet. And in fact, if I go to run by module, I can run this the, just this module by itself uh, without running anything else, and I can test it, and I can verify it works, and we can see, for example, that we initialize it to equilibrium as we would like to do for our models when we start. And we can test this, mo this module by giving it a step input in price. We can change the price. Um, which is a traditional way to test the behavior of a model. And we would expect if price goes up that the number of houses available will also go up. And of course the number of houses being constructed also goes up. So the, the model's behaving the way that we, we hope it would behave. Now the way that I made these inputs, by the way, is I right clicked and I said module. Under the module menu we have uh, input, accept input, provide output, or do neither. So I can turn this off or I can turn it on. These are all set to accept input. And also under here, I can assign these inputs. Now, these inputs want to come from somewhere else. The price needs to come from housing price. And in fact, there's a variable called housing price in the price um, module. So we'll connect to that. And normal price will come from the same place. So we'll connect to that. And demand comes from the demand module. So we're going to connect to the demand module. Now those I've already pre-built because for the sake of time. And before we go any farther, let me turn off um, run by module because we'll get confused later because it won't work. <laughs> OK, so let's go back to the top. And we still have a question mark in price. Price has a question mark because if we look inside, we'll see the supply to demand ratio is not defined. And the reason it's not defined is because we only have demand, we don't have supply. Now, I used the right click a second ago to assign these things. But we can also use the ghost tool instead. So I'm going to show that. I can use the ghost tool, and I can take houses available, which is the supply, and I can bring it into housing price, and I can drop it here. And I can move the name to the bottom, and I can connect it in. Now, this is an input that's already been assigned. If there's no connector missing, it's already been put in there. And the source, which was houses available in housing supply, has been made an output, which we'll see in a second. We'll need to fix this equation so that it actually works, so that it has supply divided by demand. And we have a running module now, which if we ran by module, wouldn't do anything. But we're not running by module. By the way, let me just very quickly show you that um, houses available is now a an output. I have this box around it inside the, uh, which looks like an O on a, on a converter, um, sort of like a square O on a stock. So that's an output. At this point, we can run this model. It's a fully functioning model. We'll need to add supply in here because it, it wasn't here. So supply is under housing supply, houses available. And we'll want to set that scale to match uh, demand, which was uh, 80 to 180. And we'll also probably want to just see the interest rate so that we can see what happens. And the interest rate, I said, is in the demand sector. So we'll, oops, I didn't hit the right thing. Oops, I did hit the right thing, sorry. Here, let me do that again. I just took out the wrong thing. Houses available, interest rate. OK, there we go. And 80 to 180. OK. And if we run this, you know nothing interesting happens. But what if we drop the interest rate at the beginning of the simulation? You will see that um, something does happen. And if we raise the interest rate again after some point, we'll see that something else interesting happens. And in fact, um, 
we won't go through this in any great detail, but you should see that our reference mode has been reproduced. Uh, demand goes up right away here, and um, price starts to rise, supply then rises to meet demand. When we raise interest rates, supply overshoots, uh, demand drops right away, and price eventually tries to catch up. So we have matched that. We don't have the defaults. I'm going to go to an alternate model that I've put together that has the mortgage stuff in it just so that we can, we can see that and we can demonstrate modules within modules. Um, so here I have a separate module model. I'll just show you that it's a slightly more complicated model. I, uh, housing demand translates to mortgage demand, which then affects the supply because you can't buy a house without a mortgage traditionally. Um, and I have this little switch here that for bank deregulation, which I'll turn on. And we can watch what happens if we run this. Um, we'll decrease the interest rate and watch what happens, right? Everything goes up as we expect. We can increase the rate a little bit. And of course, things should go a little crazy. Notice we're starting to default down here. And then we can increase the interest rate a little more. And we can watch what happens as this plays out. And I'm not going to show you due to time constraints, but um, even if we decrease the interest rate now to make up for this, because of the problems that are in the pipeline with approving mortgages that shouldn't have been approved, decreasing the interest rate does not reduce the default rate. Um, so we won't go through that. What I am going to show you is notice the price changes quite a bit throughout here. And if we want to track what the highest price was, we can go into here and we can use something I have over here. Let me find it so I can show you. I have a little module that I, a little model that I made that calculates um, maximum the maximum value of any input. So I have an input that's defined to be a module. This needs to be, this is a module input from somewhere else. And I have an output, which is the maximum. So I'm going to use that in here. I'm going to drop another module. I'm going to call it uh, house price, because it has to have a unique name. I am going to import that maximum value mod model that I, that I just showed you. And in case you don't believe me, it's, it's right there. And now that we're down here, you'll notice that we have two levels in the title bar explaining where we are. If we move up, we have to actually, we have to assign this input and we have to assign the, this output somewhere or we can't run this. So we can do that strictly from here. We don't need to go into here. If we, if we know this is a maximum value, um, function that we've put in this module that we can reuse over and over again, we can just go in here and we can connect it and we know it has one input and we're going to assign price to be that input. So price is going to be assigned to that input and we know it has one output. So I have a connector from its output and we're going to assign that to the, the maximum. So now we have house price maximum here. So we can now go back to the top and we can do the same thing. I'll just take off defaults and we'll add in house price maximum. Um, which is in here somewhere. House price maximum, and we'll scale that the same as the other prices, which is 80, no, um, sorry, 60 to 200. And when we run this, we'll start from a st straight place again. Oops, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. We'll run that from a uh, low interest rate again. There we go. So it goes up. And then we'll raise the interest rate. And then we'll raise the interest rate again. And just to see how it plays out. You'll notice the maximum rate um, tracked as it went up, and it stayed up there. It never went down. It's an orange right up here. OK? So to wrap up, um, modules have uh, many benefits. They allow you to break large, complex problems down into smaller pieces. They allow you to version control your separate pieces. They allow you to um, build your model in a way that's consistent with the traditional way to build models, where you build a dynamic hypothesis and then work down and build up the detail in each one of those, those sectors or modules of the dynamic hypothesis. They allow you to share the modules with your friends. They allow you to test the pieces individually. So these are all important benefits for us and um, will greatly improve the ability to build models. Um, I am now willing and open to take questions. Uh, so we'll wait here a second while some questions come across.